Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters here in the Diocese of Los Angeles. It is an honor and a pleasure to be able to share the good news of God in Christ with you this day. Today's gospel is so poignant for the time of pandemic we are all living in. Jesus, we are told, went away to be by himself in a deserted place. Jesus was really good at doing that. After preaching and teaching and healing the sick, we read in the Gospels frequently, we're told throughout the Gospels, he'd go away by himself to pray, to have a time of rest. He knew how to take that time out. He knew he needed to pray, to refuel himself. Prayer, meditation, it refuels us. This time was no different until it was. He couldn't hide from the people. They saw him alone in the boat and they followed him on foot. Did they run? Did they carry their young ones or those who were sick? What, if anything, did they bring with them? Did they collect more and more people along the way Come on, it's Jesus, it's the master, he's in a boat, we can follow him, come on. Is that what happened? Did they collect more and more people along the way until the crowd swelled to the size we are told that it was? The gospel doesn't tell us that, but our imaginations can fill out this story. They found Jesus. Although he had wanted to be by himself, he cured them. He talked with them. He taught them. He shared of himself freely, even though he had wanted to be alone. He spent time with them. What we are experiencing here in the Episcopal Church and what you may be experiencing throughout the Philippines as well, is the church has had to adapt. We who have been on stay-at-home orders, not able to get back into our churches yet in many cities here in America, have had to scramble and learn to be church in a very new way. What probably would have taken, at least here in the Episcopal Church, uh, maybe two general conventions to get people to move to offer offering digital worship on a weekly basis took us less than three weeks thanks to this pandemic. And the real gift, though, is that people are finding us 
in our online FaceTime, Facebook Live, Zoom, YouTube broadcasts, our answer to the stay in place orders we have been living under. People are finding us. We've had to go online and people found us online because they're home too, many of them, not all. And I'll talk about that later. Not only people in our neighborhoods, but people from different states and actually around the world. I was on a Zoom service on a weeknight at five o'clock and there was someone from Thailand on with us. We are finding we have more people joining our online services than we ever had in terms of people sitting in our pews. They are finding us and they are staying with us just as the crowd stayed with Jesus. Jesus tried to get away by himself to pray that day, but the people found him and they followed him. People are finding us and following us. Our work is to bring the love of Christ to them. But let's get back to this gospel passage. As night was falling and the disciples found Jesus, they urged him to send the crowds away from that place. After all, there were no food stalls or restaurants for people to buy food where they were, they were out in the middle of nowhere. Jesus told the disciples to feed them. And what did the disciples do? I think they thought Jesus was nuts. Their response was there wasn't enough to feed them all. They only had five loaves of bread and two fish. They only had five loaves of bread and two fish. That may have been enough for the disciples. And that was it. Not enough for anyone else. Were they interested in sharing? But then it happened, you see. Jesus told the crowd to sit down. Can't you just see that in your imagination? Over 5,000 people sitting on the ground. Maybe a blanket of some kind spread underneath them. It had been a long day. They followed Jesus. Remember, they went there by foot. They listened to him. They watched him cure people. They must have been tired and elated all at the same time. I know I would have been. Then Jesus took the bread, looked up to heaven, blessed it, and broke it and it was shared among the people gathered. It was the grandest of picnics and there were leftovers. <coughs> Excuse me. 12 baskets full. How did that happen? Now, I will say to you all that I believe in miracles. I believe in them because I have seen them and I have felt them they are real. But there is something about this story that makes my imagination soar. Can't you see it too? Jesus, just as the disciples had bread and some fish with them, just as the disciples had some bread and fish in them, what makes us think that the people gathered didn't do the same? Jesus, Jesus knows. Isn't it possible that they maybe had some small bag of something? Everyone brought a small little something that they had brought with them? The disciples did. Why wouldn't the people who gathered around Jesus, this large group of people, what makes us think they didn't? I think the true miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 is this. For me, this is the bigger miracle. That small act of kindness and generosity on Jesus's part broke open, broke open all the hearts of all who were gathered. 
It was Jesus's invitation to share from whatever they have that opened up their hearts and their bags. They may have been afraid to open their bag in front of someone else, fearing that someone might not have anything and want some of what they brought. Certainly the disciples didn't want to share and perhaps they even hid the five loaves and the fishes they were bringing them to Jesus so people couldn't see what they had. Fear. Fear kept their bags shut. Love. Love opened their bags. Jesus' act of love and care. Today in the church, we are experiencing great hardship and blessed generosity at the same time. We are seeing our brothers and sisters in Christ in the most vulnerable areas of our church working to not only make ends meet, but meet the demands of the church being in the new way the church is being in this pandemic. It's what the pandemic has wrought on us. The most important work of our clergy during this pandemic has been to keep in touch with all their people. I hear story after story of clergy and lay leaders calling the members of the congregation to check in with everyone to make sure they are okay. Are you safe? Do you have enough to eat? How can we help you? It's not unlike Jesus spending time with that large crowd. But our hardest hit areas suffer not only because many have lost their jobs, but the most vulnerable among us are the ones having to work in the most dangerous of jobs, risking exposure to COVID-19 to more so more of us can stay at home under these stay at home orders. The risk is higher in these communities, especially as lack of access to good health care is prevalent. And yet, in the midst of this pandemic, we've witnessed incredible generosity of many in helping by sending extra funds to their churches or participating in helping with food banks. And some of our larger, more well-resourced churches are starting to partner with small, more vulnerable churches. I am sure you have all seen the, the demonstrations and yes, rioting that has gone on here in America and indeed in other places around the world in reaction to the caught on tape murder of George Floyd. Social media has helped us shed light on the sin of racism and white supremacy that has plagued this country for centuries. We here in the Diocese of Los Angeles have been vocal and active proponents of breaking down the systems which support oppression of our brothers and sisters in Christ here in this country and throughout the world. The pandemic has shed a harsh light on the lack of resources many of our citizens in this country have access to, especially our African-American brothers and sisters and our Latino brothers and sisters. Lack of access to good health care, lack of access to sufficient and healthy foods to eat, underemployment or unemployment, especially during this pandemic has caused death rates and rates of COVID-19 infections in these communities to rise exponentially. We as Christians must continue the work in this country to break down the systems that oppress God's beloved community. We have our work cut out for us. For me, the pandemic in many ways has broken us all open as Jesus did that bread that day. It has exposed our weaknesses and our strengths. I know right now the church, our church, is on the cusp of a reformation. It must reform itself in light of this pandemic 
to not only shift its focus from in-person worship, but to pivot and have the ability to worship digitally or a hybrid of part in-person and part digital worship. The people that God has brought to our literal computer doors, phone doors, iPad doors, tablet doors, the people that God has brought us digitally during this time, they're still going to need us when we can open our churches again. We must not desert them. We must never desert them. We must also work to care more deeply about one another. That's another thing this pandemic has shown. Those who refuse to wear masks or practice social distancing in this country aren't just putting themselves at risk. They're risking the lives of those around them. The pandemic has brought into perfect light the fact that we need to understand that we are dependent on each other. We are all connected, one to each other and all to God. We need to share our resources to the best of our ability. One person's action directly affects another. We see this day in and day out with the numbers of new COVID-19 cases rising here. We see this connection digitally. Would I have been invited to share with you this way before COVID-19? Maybe. Then again, maybe not. But it's an opportunity I've cherished and I'm happy to be able to share with you this morning. My brothers and sisters in Christ in the Philippines, please know I pray for you all and I ask you to pray for us. We need each other. We need each other now more than ever. We are connected and we must stay that way. Friends in Christ, people are hungry for God. The feeding of the 5,000 shows how we can share so that everyone can be fed. And I'm talking about the bread of life. It is our work as the church to offer all the bread of life in person, online, or a mix of both, a hybrid. Hopefully, I'll get to see you all again soon, either in person, digitally, or a hybrid of both. Blessings and much love to you all. Amen.